Okay, we're going to be going over our classwork from last Tuesday night, um, April 10th, and we are going to be talking about all of the different uh, topics that will be um, on our quiz um, or our test next week. So our first example was to simplify an algebraic expression that had fractions in it. Now when we have a fraction in an algebraic expression, uh, we cannot clear it. Expressions cannot be cleared. They can only be simplified. So we have to deal with that. So our first process, step in our process here is to distribute out. So we have 5 6 times x and then minus and 5 6 times 3 quarters. Now if you need to take this to a separate place and do this, you probably should do that in order to make sure that you're doing it correctly because we don't want to just multiply straight across. Remember it's better if we can see that we have some canceling involved. So taking out that common factor of a 3 gives us instead of 15 24 gives us 5 8 and then minus our 1 6 and then plus our 7 halves. And now once we have everything simplified down into terms, then we can combine the like terms. So we have like terms here and here, and we have like terms here and here. So now again, taking to a different place, you might want to go and do the two problems that you have that are fraction problems. I need to add 5 6, then I need to add 7 halves. So I'm going to do it over here to the side, 5 6, and then plus, and I'm adding 7 halves. So in order to add these, I have to have a common denominator, which is of course 6. So 3 times uh, three times 2 gives me 6. So 3 times 7 is going to give me my new numerator of 21. And now I can add these. So I have 5 plus 21, which is 26, 26. Now I don't want to leave it that way. I want to reduce it. So I have a common factor of 2 in there. So I'm going to reduce those by dividing out that common factor of 2, and that's going to give me 13 in the numerator and thirds in the denominator. And once I have um, 13 thirds, then I have that as an x. Now I'm going to move on to my um, constant terms as well. In my constant terms, I have both being negative, so I'm going to again be add, adding those. So I'm going to have, <coughs> pardon me, 5 eighths plus 1 sixth. Now on these, again, we need a like term. And so with like terms, we need a common denominator, which in this case, again, is 24. We have 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So one more factor of 3 times the 8. And that gets multiplied by the numerator as well. So we have 15 24 for our higher term for 5 8 The 6th was going to get multiplied by a 4 to make it 24. And then my numerator also gets multiplied by that 4. So 4 times 1 makes it 4. Now I can add those up. So 15 plus 4, which is 19. And the common denominator comes along as 24. And we need to remember that those are negative and that is a negative, and that's 19 24 And that is as good as it gets. We want to make sure that everything's reduced or simplified and that we have finished the process. Now, if you wish, you could make 13 thirds into a mixed number. 3 goes into 13 four times with 1 left over and then denominator of a 3. So 4 and a third x minus 19 24 But that's about the only other thing that you could do with it. And as I've told you in the past, that when we have um, variables involved, most times we will leave those as improper fractions just because we don't want to be confused. All right, moving on to our next problem, problem number two. Um, now you're going to notice that this video is going to go much longer than five minutes. I'm going to do the first four problems and then I'll move on to the next four and so on and so forth. But I have a video editing capability now of longer than five minutes. So I'm going to do that with this particular um, video. All right, so problem number two. We can solve this problem in two different ways. If you look on my web page, you'll see there's a key for this, and I did it in both ways. But I'm going to do this in the way that I really, really want you to get used to doing that, and that's clearing. So again, we distribute. This problem is just like the first one in terms of the numbers, but we have an equation this time. So 5 6 minus 5 eighths for exactly the same reasons that we got in our first problem. 
um, but this time it equals 1 sixth plus 7 halves. So what that means is that we are not dealing with an um, expression, we're dealing with an equation which can be cleared. So what we need is the least common denominator of all these, so I'm actually going to build it up so you see it. Um, we have 2 times 3 here, 2 times 2 times 2 here, and then just the 2 over there. So that means we have 1, 2, 3 factors of 2, and 1 factor of 3 in this, and you see 8 times 3, which gives us 24, which is what we said before. That's our least common denominator. So we're going to multiply every single term by that least common denominator. Now remember, when we do this, we're multiplying it first just symbolically because we don't want to um, we don't want to multiply it out we don't want to make more work for ourselves what we're wanting to do instead is just multiply cancel and then multiply out so 6 will go into 24 four times and 4 times 5 is equal to 20 and those are x's and then 8 will go into 24 three times so 3 times 5 which is 15 and then Four, uh, 6 will go into 24 4 times, and 4 times 1 is 4, and then plus, and then 2 will go into 24 12 times, and 12 times 7 is 84, and those are x's. Now we have an equation that has absolutely no fractions in it, and we can go ahead and we can go ahead and we can move the variables together. So we have an add a negative 20x and add a negative 20x and therefore we'll have a negative 15 is equal to a 4 plus 64x and then we can move the 4 over to the other side and now we see that we have a negative 19 is equal to a 64x and then finally multiplying by the reciprocal, which looks like division because it is, we get our final answer and our final answer is x equals negative 19 64ths. Now hopefully you remember the little lesson that I gave you on your calculator the other night in class so you could see if that was the solution indeed and when you do check that you will find that that is the solution. Okay, moving on to problem number three. Problem number three, we have a um, word problem that involves a geometry problem with some translation. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a picture. <clears throat> so this is the perimeter of a room, so I need a rectangle for the room. And the perimeter of that room, we are going to take in and we're going to fill in our prior information that the perimeter is equal to 2 times the length plus 2 times the width and we're told that that perimeter is 44 meters. And now, once we have that, then we go on further, and it says if the length of the room is 6 meters less than 3 times the width, what is the width of the room? So we're talking about the length of the room and the width of the room. And it says the length of the room is 6 meters less than 3 times the width. Well, this is one of those translation problems from the very beginning of class. Now we're going to write this in words and phrases and mathematical operators and numbers. So we have the length is equal to, right, the length is 6 meters less, subtract 6, than 3 times, 3 times is 3 fifths. Now, that leaves us with only one thing unknown. And that one thing that we know nothing about is W over here. And so I'm going to call this W over here the width, and I'm going to give it a variable besides W because I think it's confusing for students to just use the W because it's not really ending up to be substitution. Now, there's one substitution problem here to make an expression for the length in terms of our variable. So we put in that x as a substitution, an evaluation, and now we have that an expression for the length is 3x minus 6. Now we also have this formula, 2l plus 2w is equal to 44. That's a formula, right? And we can evaluate that formula when l is equal to 
3x minus 6, right? This is the value that we can put right in there. And when the width at w is equal to x. So I have 2 times 3x minus 6 plus 2 times x equals 44. And then I simplify and solve because that's an algebraic equa equation. So distribute 6x minus 12 plus 2x equals 44. And finally, simplify on the left over here. 6 and 2 make 8x minus 12 equals 44. And then add 12 to both sides. And 8x, therefore, is equal to um, 56. And finally, multiply by the reciprocal. And now we see that x is equal to 7. So we can answer our question here. We say that the width is 7, and we don't want to forget units. These are meters, so 7 meters, and that's our final answer. Okay, moving on to problem number 4. Problem number 4, we have a solving a formula for one of the variables. And this has given you special instructions. It says that we want to try to clear this first. Now, you can do two things to clear it. You could do a distributive property first and then clear it from there, which is what I've always recommended to you, for you to do in the past. Or I'm going to show you a little trick here. I'm going to show you a trick to say, okay, let's just take all of this stuff right here and let's call this just a variable. Okay, let's just for a minute just say that was just a single variable because it's a number, right? And that's all a number represents. It's just a variable. So let's just call that one half x for a second. Now, if that's all we had, we could clear this very simply by saying, oh, each side of the equation needs to get multiplied by a 2, right? So I'm going to multiply by 2 over here and I'm going to multiply by 2 over here. So when I do that, I get 2a is equal to 1 times our x. But this isn't x, right? This x is actually all this stuff over here. So let's put it back in. 1, and I'll make that a fancy one, times h times the sum of b and t. And there you go. And that's what it looks like. And look at that. Now it's cleared. So now we can go through and we can do distributive property because we have to get out that t, right? So we have 2a is equal to, and we have um, h times b plus h times t, and then we have to undo the addition here, so we'll move the h times b over to the other side by adding its opposite, and I'm going to put in some arrows here so we can kind of see where we're working, and we'll get here. And so we have 2a minus hb, and then equals ht. And we're after solving for t, so I'm going to divide by an h here, and I'm going to divide by an h here, and I'm going to divide by an h here. Remember that it says your answer has a sum of terms. So if I just did one big one and divide by h over here, it wouldn't be a sum of terms, would it? It would just be a single term. So I asked for a specific thing, so that's what we're going to do. So 2a over h, that's not going to be anything but 2a over h. But you'll notice in this next one, the h's can cancel here. So I'm going to cancel those, and I'm going to leave it as b. And then that is equal to t. And so that's what my answer is going to look like. Now there are many different ways of looking at this. And if we're working on a science problem, in a science problem what we would want is we would definitely want to have just one single term over here because it's easier to evaluate a formula that's one single term. However, if we're doing this in, in looking toward our math work where we're looking for the slope-intercept form, which is how we often use this, then it's much better to have a sum of terms. And so I'm trying to have you practice that sum of terms idea that we see most often in our algebra uses. All right, I'll have another video to do the next four problems.